Reports emerge that hospitals around the country are being hacked. Patient data is being compromised. Full medical records can garner as much as $1,000 by identity thieves on the black market due to their comprehensive nature. But in this case, the malicious code doesn't seem interested in harvesting data so much as it does destroying it. Hackers have scrabbled medical software and corrupted registry systems. Patient records are being destroyed. This is impacting medical workers' ability to treat patients, to perform surgeries, and to administer the proper medication. The suspicious thing is, no ransom has been demanded. This is leaving people perplexed at what the motivation could be for such a heinous attack. Customers complain of widespread disruptions in the banking system. People are having problems accessing their bank accounts. ATMs and debit machines are not working, causing chaos at many stores around the country. If all you have is a bank card and a credit card, you are SOL. Many trading apps and crypto exchanges are succumbing to what some are calling a denial of service attack, but the real cause is unknown. The trading day on Wall Street has been halted as authorities try to assess the damage of these attacks and restore the impacted systems. However, panic was starting to take hold in the markets before trading was suspended, and rumors are starting to spread that this is a coordinated attack by another country. The threat of panic buying is already in the air. Police departments around the country are being hit with massive malware attacks corrupting their databases, but not before stealing troves of department data and their communication networks are being compromised. This is making it much more difficult to coordinate emergency services for the crises that are mounting in the wake of disruptions in the market and medical sectors. It now appears evident to everybody that this is a coordinated attack on NATO and its allies. Hackers appear to have taken control of many surveillance and security systems associated with government agencies, leaving these agencies locked out of these systems, prompting many to be shut down as a matter of national security. Rumor has it that top-ranking government officials are already being taken away to top-secret locations. Many water treatment facilities around the country are reporting that hackers are commandeering their systems and wreaking havoc on these systems by doing things like adjusting the level of chemicals used to treat the water, making the water toxic to drink. This is causing forced shutdowns of these systems and this is likely going to lead to water shortages. Natural gas and oil pipelines around the country have their software infiltrated and corrupted. In some places, serious damage is inflicted on the network, causing explosions in some refineries and pipelines. Companies are forced to shut these systems down entirely before more damage can be inflicted. This is likely going to lead to lengthy fuel shortages until these systems can go back online. Panic is now intensifying in what appears to be a full-scale coordinated attack on the critical infrastructure of most NATO countries and its allies. All flights are grounded and transportation grinds to a halt. Hackers have apparently uploaded malware to transportation networks, aviation networks, locomotive, cargo ships, subway stations, and even the personal vehicles of many civilians have been found to have dormant malware installed which is now being activated causing widespread commuter chaos. Reports of vehicles seizing up on freeways and having braking systems disengaged has led to total gridlock in many major cities. Numerous train derailments and subway accidents have been reported around the country. Navigational systems are also being compromised. And to make matters worse, even traffic lights in many major cities have reportedly been going haywire, adding to the pandemonium. Hackers have also targeted dams across North America. This has had the effect of disrupting the power grid, contributing to some blackouts in some localized areas, but it also is causing massive destruction of numerous sites that are now inundated with water from these dams. Many dams themselves have been permanently taken offline from the damage that they have incurred from this hack. Telecommunications networks across the country begin to go offline. Not only has millions of user data been stolen from their cell phones, but now their phones are being hacked with cryptic messaging alerting them that they have nothing to fear and that it will all be over soon. 
There are even some reports of phones exploding when people tried to charge them. It's alleged that hackers have misconfigured the firmware of the fast chargers to melt the internal components of the connecting charge systems when people go to plug in their phones. Hackers managed to penetrate large data centers of social media giants and cloud-based services, corrupting and in some cases outright destroying information. The social media footprint and online identity data of millions has been wiped out in an instant. Hackers managed to take control of critical satellites that help regulate everything from GPS, electrical grids, satellite communications, and even transportation systems. Apparently, some of the satellites have had their thruster systems commandeered, and they're altering their course and crashing them into other satellites and military assets. We have now undoubtedly crossed the line into all-out war. Food distributors and private companies across the USA are locked out of their systems, leading to fears of widespread disruption in the distribution of essential commodities. Because 85% of the critical infrastructure in the United States is in the hands of private companies, mounting a coordinated effort at this point is effectively impossible. Governments are now in panic mode and are contemplating what type of military retaliation they are going to take on the perpetrators who they now believe they have enough evidence to coordinate a multilateral counteroffensive. By this point, all levels of government, right up to the CIA, have had their systems infiltrated and compromised, making a coordinated response even more challenging. Things just keep getting worse. Military installations throughout the NATO alliance experience an onslaught of cyber attacks, leading military equipment to malfunction, disrupting communication systems, and in some cases even commandeering military assets like drones and controlling them. But that's not the worst of it, as there are fears that hackers are now targeting military defense systems and even intercontinental ballistic missiles. The internet itself has now been compromised, as widespread denial-of-service attacks are waged on DNS hosts. This drastically limits the ability of people to communicate on the web. By this time, looting has run rampant as people whose finances are dependent on digital exchanges and the internet to coordinate these financial activities have had to resort to theft to get supplies for what everybody knows is coming. Within the span of a day, everybody is talking about rumors of another global conflict. The final nail in the coffin comes when many electrical grids around the world have been taken offline, their IT infrastructure destroyed, disabling some systems and causing some nuclear facilities to even go into meltdown. Millions are left in the dark without supplies, without emergency services, without fuel, and NATO and its allies are now indefensible on many fronts. World War III has begun. The scary thing is, is that the above scenario is entirely plausible and likely doesn't do justice to what a true full-scale cyber war would look like on the ground. The most powerful countries in the world have amassed massive cyber arsenals just waiting to be unleashed for such a scenario. Right now, these attacks are usually coupled with ransom demands, locally isolated incidents and limited in their scope. But in the case of an all-out attack, the damage that could be inflicted would be apocalyptic. This is why it may go down. All software has bugs. Hackers refer to these as vulnerabilities. These are potential gateways for hackers who want to create a disruption, steal data, or outright destroy the systems that the software is founded upon. The problem is, the more technology pervades and integrates into every aspect of our lives, the more access points or points of entry there are for hackers and thus the more vulnerable we become to cyber attacks. The more smartphones, the more smartwatches, and the more access points to the internet, the more vulnerable we become. Once a vulnerability is known about, it can be patched and secured. But the problem is that millions of these bugs exist in critical systems that we rely on every day around the world. And as the Internet of Things evolves, hackers have more access points than ever before. Nations around the world have been probing their opponent's systems and stockpiling their best cyber weapons, which are built on these vulnerabilities. Some of these are called zero days. A zero day is a notably serious software vulnerability 
that many nation states around the world are amassing for such a scenario. It's likely that in the preemptive stages of a full-scale global war, an onslaught of cyber attacks would attack the critical infrastructure that keeps us all alive. What's even worse is that nation states and independent hacking groups can install dormant code on these critical systems to be unleashed in a time of war, causing major disruption of services. That means that right now there might be malicious code on your devices just waiting to be unleashed when the time comes. Imagine a scenario where hundreds of thousands of malicious attacks are waged all at once and because there is no clear-cut protocol on how to respond and plausible deniability with respect to who is doing it, waging a counter-offensive would be significantly delayed. The ensuing social panic and fallout of such a scenario would be impossible to quantify, but it's one more reason that everybody needs to be prepared. The best way to protect yourself from such a scenario is to strive to be as self-reliant as possible. This means limiting your dependence on digital technologies, having a way to generate your own electricity, protect your home and the people in it, and have an ample stockpile of food and resources. If you want to know how to get prepared for scenarios like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out our extensive library of what we call Blue Strip videos, which go into great detail about emergency preparedness topics. The threat of cyber warfare is at an all time high, and we need to be prepared for the big one. Thanks for watching. Stay vigilant. The strong survive, the prepared thrive. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. The best quality products at the best prices. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER, all caps, all one word, for 10% off. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.